Hi, I'm Aaron and this is Exploring Elixir. In this episode, we're going to be taking a look at building multi-tenant applications with Elixir using Ecto and a helper library called Triplex. So if you're not familiar with the term multi-tenant, it's simply a way to design software so that you can run a single instance of it on your servers and you can be used by different groups of users or tenants and to them it looks like they have their own copy of the software running on the server. So their data is kept separate, their user accounts are, se are separated, and the configuration is separated, it might even have a different skin, etc. So it really feels like a separate app to each of them. Now you can kind of imagine writing such an application um, by keeping the data separate in your storage layer. You might do that in a traditional database by having perhaps a column in appropriate tables that says that you know this row belongs to that tenant and then just following that all the way down through your database schema. That's a bit error prone and it really makes your queries more verbose and it'd be nice if you could just let the database handle this for you in some fashion. So Ecto comes with a feature built in that it makes this quite easy to build multi-tenant apps on top of and this is query prefix. So query prefixes are a string tag that you add to queries that instructs Ecto to perform that query, be it an insert, delete, whatever, within a specific namespace in the database, keeping it completely separate from uh, the rest of the data. So you can imagine mapping tenant names or, I, or some sort of identifier to these prefixes and then letting Ecto keep all of that data separate where you can store everything from user accounts to uh, configuration data and whatnot. Of course, there's a lot more to do on top of query prefixes. Um, you need to make sure that each tenant has a uh, namespace in the database. You need to make sure that when you run migrations, they run for each uh, of these tenants, etc. And that's where Triplex comes in. Triplex adds uh, a bunch of nice features on top of Ecto's query prefix, as we'll see in a moment, um, to make running multi-tenant applications really easy. So let's go over to the demo code now. And in here, I've written just a very simple kind of toy version of an order system. And we start with a Ecto repo, just like any other one you've seen. I'm using the child spec feature from Elixir 1.5 here to make it easier to use with our supervisor. But other than that, it's just a straightforward Ecto repo as we've always known them. In the configuration, I haven't really added anything except to instruct the triplex library to add a prefix to the names of tenants with ee underscore. This is really nice. You're trying to keep this uh, all your tenants namespaced away from perhaps other schemas you have in your database. Otherwise, it's exactly like any other Ecto application. So far, great. We haven't really had to do anything new or learn anything new. So I mentioned earlier that you need to run migrations per tenant. And because they each get their own area in the database. So that's where things start to get a bit different. If we look at the migrations in the code base here, um, in priv tenants named after the repo, um, you can see I have one, not two directories here, one called migrations and one called tenant migrations. The migrations one is the normal Ecto migrations, and this just runs in the global namespace in PostgreSQL that's public. Um, and so we can look at the one I have here, and it just creates a table called items in the public namespace, nothing more. Again, nothing like everything that we know from Ecto we are applying here. So now the tenant migrations contains migration files that, as we'll see here, look just like regular Ecto migration files, because they're exactly the same, but these are run per tenant in their respective schemas. So when you create a new tenant, which we'll see how to do in just a moment, uh, it, cr it runs all of the migrations for that tenant. And when you add a new migration, it runs them for all the existing tenants. So you don't have to worry about that bookkeeping yourself. You can just pretend that each tenant really does have their own database. So here we're creating an orders table. Um, if we go to the order items, migration, we see we're just creating an order items table that references um, the orders table. Now the order items table, as you notice, has an item ID and we had an items table in the public schema. And so we can reference between schemas in our database. So, but we're going to see how to do that in a bit. For now, we're just going to stick to what we've seen before. It all looks very much like we're using Ecto. So let's quickly go back to our, our code here, and I've written a small module called tenants that allows us to set up tenants. So first of all, it lets us list tenants, and I've kept debug on here so we can see the queries that uh, are resulting from using uh, triplex and Ecto's query prefixes. And when I call that, we see we have two um, tenants set up right now in the database, Acme and Globex, and both with that EE prefix that we set up. 
And if we go back to the database command line, we can see that indeed in the public namespace, we have that one table called items. And then if we look at the schemas, we have one for each of our tenants. And if we look at in one of the tenants, say Globex, we see the order items and orders tables that we expect to see there because we saw those in our tenants migration. And if we look in the Acme uh, tenant uh, schema, we see the same thing. Um, if we do a select currently, say from orders, we'll see there's, there's an order there, but there isn't one if we come into Acme. So this data is being kept separate, which is really nice. So if we come back here, we can list just by asking triplex for all of the tenants. New is very simple. We just give it um, a name and the repo. In this case, that's our tenants repo. Um, and then it sets it all up, including running the migrations for us. Removing is equally easy. Renaming is equally easy. We can see that there's a triplex, a triplex exists function that allows us to check whether that actually exists or not. And if it doesn't, we can return an error tuple. You'll see this a lot in this uh, example code base, just to make sure that um, what we expect to be there is there. Okay, so that's tenants. It's, it's really simple to add, remove, etc. tenants. But what we probably want to do now is actually start making some orders in these tenants. So uh, I've created this orders, tenants.orders module, and that allows us to do things like create orders, um, list items in the order, add items, delete items, etc. Very straightforward stuff, nothing too out of the ordinary. So um, if we, we can create a, a new order, and we're going to create it in the Globex tenant, and we'll call it uh, my order. And so when we go and do that, when we come down to the, um, well, first of all, when we create an order, we check to see if it exists or not as a tenant. And if so, we create a gen server and return that, otherwise we turn an error tuple. And that check for um, does it exist, we can see that schema here, or that query here. It's selecting from the schema. Um, and then it goes in and uses a change set from the order schema. So I've got a couple schemas defined here. Um, and then it inserts into the repo. And this is the key part here. We say prefix, triplex to prefix in the name of the tenant. And it does all the bookkeeping that's necessary, <clears throat> including putting the prefix on and whatnot. Um, and then if we get a uh, order back, great, we continue on and we get back our gen server, which we have here bound to the order variable. At that point, we can add items to the order, right? So I can, and if we come over here, actually, let's take a look at that in our, in our database. So I have um, my order is ID number five. And there are no order items associated with that order. Okay, so let's add um, 10 of item ID one and here we can see that it inserts it and we can see the prefix all along in here put in for us. So if we come over back to our database and we select from the order items, we can see there is our item, order ID 5. We have 20 items at this point um, in there. And we can now go ahead and we can also remove an item. And we had it in our order again. Great. If we come back, we can see we have 10. If we delete another, say, 15, which is more than we have, it's going to, you know, we could think that, oh, now it's going to you know, have some negative number, but it doesn't actually just deletes the item. So we'll see how that works in just a moment. Now, before I go on, the question that you, you might have in mind is like, where do we get this tenant name from? Well, this is up to your application. And Triplex does come with some nice plugs for um, use with Phoenix or just plug apps, uh, where you can actually extract this from some uh, data in your session, maybe part of the URL, perhaps um, the user session, uh, whatnot. So it also provides some ways to get that tenant ID out. But you can also just drive it, as I'm doing here, or have been doing here from the command line. OK. so. Up to this point, as you can see, it's it's really like we've just written a normal Ecto application um, with add being here. We insert um, with a change set. And the only real thing that we're doing is we're prefixing or we're adding that prefix using triplex. Um, you can do this now, of course, with uh, using both schema or schema lists 
uh, queries. And I, I have a mix of these in the demo. So if you look at the repository here, you can see um, how Triplex works with both kinds of queries with Ecto2. Now, where it gets a little bit different is in those cases where you have to do or you want to do a migration that has um, some database specific usage of features or something that actor doesn't provide for you so you have to write some bare sql and you want that to be run per tenant so we have two cases where this this happens in the demo one is in the fact that when we look at the order items table um, the item id references a table in an, another uh, schema in, in fact the public schema so the way that um, i manage that is by writing a little bit of alter table, just raw SQL. Um, and this is gonna get run once per tenant. So I need to tell it what prefix this applies to um, because PostgreSQL requires that in an alter table regardless of what schema you currently set it to or, or search space. So the way you can get that prefix in a migration, and this is something that wasn't immediately clear in the documentation, so I thought it'd be nice to, to show, um, is whenever an Ecto schema or Ecto migration is run, there is a process dictionary entry. And the process dictionary is a map or, um, or a dictionary that exists local to each process. It's kind of like thread local storage, if you will. <clears throat> and the Ecto migration sets up a entry in there keyed to Ecto migration uh, the atom, and it's a map of, of values. And the uh, triplex library adds a prefix item to that map. So you can get the prefix out when this is run by calling process.get, which looks up in the process dictionary, acto migration, and then pattern matching on prefix. And then you can use it in your uh, migrations. So here I'm using that prefix to tell PostgreSQL which table called order items I'm concerned about. And then you can do things like set foreign keys to something in say the public um, or uh, namespace, which is the main one. And of course I use do the same thing in the down. The other place that I'm using this is when um, I'm trying to do a trigger. So <clears throat> in this case, um, what I want to happen is I want to be able to, as we can see here in the delete statement here, delete function, that I just want to minus the amount of items that are passed in. So I get an amount of items and all I'm doing is, is subtracting that number of items. I don't want to think about zero falling below zero. I don't want to worry about concurrency in my application, um, etc. I just want to, if it falls below zero, get rid of it or below one, really get rid of it from the, from the, uh, um, uh, the order. So, this is handled using a trigger in the database, which keeps it right in the database engine where I don't have to replicate it everywhere in my, my application code, and the database handles all the concurrency and whatnot for me. But again, I have this issue where I need to use the prefix in a few places to make this work in Postgres. So again, I grab the prefix, I then use this um, using variable substitution in my uh, create or replace function statement that I then pass in to the repo. And then again, when I create the trigger, I once again have to use the prefix um, here because again, Postgres, even if you're running it in that schema, it doesn't know which table you're meaning to reference. Um, and so you have to tell it because you could be order items in any schema. And then again, I have my down. In this case, I don't need the prefix. So that little prefix trick comes in real handy uh, when you're trying to do some raw SQL that should be run per tenant. So this will be run in every tenant um, that gets created um, or updated with this migration. And that's why you need that, that prefix there. Otherwise, it really is just like writing any other Ecto application. Really simple, as long as you remember to always add that triplex to prefix and then you're good to go and you have a multi-tenant application. So simple, so easy. I hope you enjoyed this. Check out the, the code in the Git repository if you want to explore a little bit further. Be sure to hit the subscribe button and I'll see you in the next episode.